Hi, and welcome to another WatchGeek video. Today I'll be doing a review of a mundane Simply Elegant. But first, I would like to thank Silvertime Watchtower for supplying this watch, and if you want to check them out, you can click on the link in the description. We'll start the review with the dial and the history behind it, as I see it as the main part of this watch. And by that, I mean it is what makes this watch. It is an official Swiss railway station clock design that originated in 1944. It was designed by Hans Hilfiger, an engineer and a railway employee. The initial design didn't include the unique seconds hand that is inspired by the railway signaling disc, as that was added in 1953. This design has been in usage since then, so it has become as legendary as the Swiss watch industry itself, and a Swiss national icon. It has also been listed among the most outstanding designs of the 20th century by both the Newark Museum of Modern Art and the London Design Museum. It is designed to be legible and easy to read on train stations, and I'm blown away by how good it works as a wristwatch dial. It is so contemporary and modern looking, like it's a pure designer piece. But then, it has this incredible readability that shows it was designed by an efficient engineer. It shows that art and engineering can sometimes come to the same answer. And yes, I do believe it can be called art, as it makes me feel emotions just by looking at it. The dial features the mundane inscription and underneath the logo of the Swiss Federal Railway. Together with these three sets of letters, and if you were wondering what those stand for, there are disambiguations of the Swiss Federal Railway in three languages used there, so German, French and Italian. At 6 o'clock there is a small Swiss made inscription, and that's it, so as clean as it can be, and thanks to the lack of a date function, it is also as symmetrical as it can be. Now both the dial and the markers are matte and have no shine to them, increasing the already great legibility. And although you might think the markers are just painted, they're not, they're actually applied, but in a very thin way to keep the flatness of the dial. I mentioned that the dial reminds me of an art piece, so just like on an art piece, a painting for example, where the frame is secondary and just an unavoidable necessity that allows you to hang the painting on the wall, the case on this watch is the same. It's just an unavoidable necessity that holds the dial on your wrist. And that is why I love the fact the case is so simple looking and not drawing attention to itself. It's just efficient while not being flashy. It has simple and almost perfectly straight lugs and a simple almost flat bezel. The fact that the case is completely brushed is yet another thing that helps in keeping your attention to the dial. If they made it polished, it would have been flashy and detracted from the dial too much. Plus, as a bonus, a brushed case will handle scratches better. Another thing supporting this theory is the minuscule crown that is signed with the red mundane logo, which is a surprisingly well thought out detail that goes great with the round tip of the second hand. Despite being so small, thanks to the sloping case back, it's actually very easy to pull it out and set the time. When it comes to the specs, the watch has a 41mm diameter, but looks much bigger than that, thanks to the large and clean dial design. The lug to lug is 47.5, which means the lugs will not overhang most wrists. But because of the impression of a bigger watch, I feel it's just too big for me. Luckily, there is a 36mm version that I think would fit me perfectly, so if you, like me, prefer smaller watches, you can still enjoy this great design. The thickness is an incredible 6.2 millimeters, but here's the cool part. The watch feels way thinner than that, as it's 6.2 at the center of the case back, and then it slopes to the edges, so an actual size that you see and notice, it's just under 3 millimeters. It really is amazing to look at it on the wrist, especially combined with the flatness of the dial, as you get an illusion of wearing an LCD screen that has the watch face displayed on it. It's weird, but in a cool and fun way. I personally love it, as I usually prefer thinner watches. The crystal is a flat sapphire which suits the watch perfectly, as it accentuates the already mentioned thinness and flatness, and reduces any reflections or glare, which is something you definitely don't want with this type of dial. This version comes on a shark mesh bracelet that has a sliding clasp, meaning you can adjust it to an infinite amount of positions and always find a perfect fit. The sizing is also very easy, as you just have to pry this hinge open by using anything you can fit in this hole as a lever, and then you just slide the buckle to wherever you want and press it again to lock it in place. 
I usually dislike shark mesh bracelets mostly because they're used on divers watches and divers watches tend to be very thick while mesh bracelets tend to be very thin so to me that combination feels kind of wrong on this on the other hand thanks to the thin case the bracelet looks and feels like a natural extension of the case and I actually like it don't get me wrong I would still probably end up wearing it on a black leather strap but over the summer the bracelet would be an excellent option the watch is powered by a Swiss Ronda 1063 quartz movement, a metal gold-plated movement that is jeweled and is serviceable. The battery life is rated to 25 months or roughly just over two years. And the watch does feature an end-of-life indicator where the seconds hand will skip to let you know the battery is low. When it comes to the precision or control of the seconds hand, it's kind of meaningless on this watch thanks to the unique design of the hand. So one cannot check the quality that way, but just like any quartz movement these days, I believe you can expect a lifetime of problem-free usage. If you want a more interesting movement that moves like the original train station clocks, these are offered with the now famous stop to go movement that circles the dial with the seconds hand in 58 seconds and then waits two seconds until the minute hand jumps to the next minute before it starts moving again. The reason for that odd motion on the watch is to pay tribute to the station clock. While on the station clock, the reason is that all the clocks on all the stations are controlled by one master clock to ensure their perfect synchronicity. So the clocks will complete a minute in 58 seconds and then they will stop, waiting for a signal from a master clock to move to the next minute. Once they get the signal, they jump the minute hand forward by one and the watch starts ticking away again. So a pretty brilliant way of making them all perfectly synced all the time. To conclude, I'm completely in love with this timepiece, so I am a bit biased for which I apologize. To me it is all about the design of the dial, and it's such a great and timeless design that it will look good 200 years from now. By adding this watch to your collection, you would have a piece of art and a design icon of the 20th century readily available to carry around on your wrist. The fact you can actually tell the time with it is just a bonus. There are mechanical versions of this watch if you can't stand quartz, but to me, this thin version just makes the most out of that dial, and it is the one I would choose, only in 36. Oh, and before we end the video, to all of you who have Apple products and find the design of this watch strangely familiar, it's because Apple copied the design without permission, which ended up with Apple paying 22.5 million Swiss francs in an out-of-court settlement for the permission to use it. Well, this pretty much completes this week's review, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe by pressing this button right here. And until the next video, bye.